Welcome, we want to talk about church in this program. What is church? Because what we see today is that there is people who have left what they thought was church, uh, where they saw it was an institution, it was not the real church, the church they were longing for to experience. And they saw, this is not real church, something is off here, but then they have left that. And are now going around and saying, we are church, without really being the church also. What is church? We are going to talk about that. And uh, we have all worked with church playing in different ways. I worked with three church playing in Denmark before I worked with Last Reformation. I have been uh, worked as an evangelist, I've worked as a youth pastor, and I've been uh, a pastor in a church. And you have worked as... Yeah, I was, uh, I've helped with two church plants. I was an associate pastor at one. I was in leadership at another one. And then uh, I've also done um, several revivals and, and things like that as well. Yeah, so I was a, a pastor of a, a big one, a mega church, uh, associate pastor, missions director, and then was on staff at another church before that, and then have done church planting mm. overseas. Yeah. yeah. So, so I would just start. We I have a book called The Last Reformation. That is our journey, and many have read the book. Our journey out of the what we call church system, out to become a disciple movement of what we are, and the freedom of being a church and. And many people have read my book and many people have, have seen, yes, there's more to church than going to a, a big church on Sunday and doing things. Church is community, it's living together and it's all of that. But we are also seeing people now who say we are the church. And, but they're not saying we, they're actually saying I am the church. Mm. And it can be uh, dangerous in that sense, mm -hmm. because if I say to you who are seeing this video, you are the church. If I say you as singular, that you alone, no, you are not the church alone. <laughs> but you as people, you are the church. We alone are not the church. We alone are member of mm -hmm. the church, member of the body. And we see, People stuck inside a system who think they're the church just because they go to a building. But it don't make you the church because you go to a building two hours on Sundays. But we also see people who are not committed to anything, who are just going out on the street telling about Jesus, just living their solo life, and where so many things that is part of church are not there. Mm -hmm. There is no leadership, there is no... Um, accountability, there is no five on ministry working, there is none of that mm -hmm. working. And we want to talk about that. What, what do you want to say? What is church and how do you see it today? Um, well, the first thing that, that I think of with, with church is that, it, like you were talking about it, it says that we're living stones. So we're, we're to build something and everyone is a member of the body because the church is the body of Christ. And we need every single part of that member working together to be the fullness of the body to represent Christ on the earth. And with the fullness of a body, you can see that, say, my body or your bodies, they can do things. They can pick up pencils. It can write. You can see. You can walk. You can drive. But you need every Every part of the body to be able to do that. So if you just have, let's say, if the people are the part of the body that are the eyes and they just meet together, you're not going to be able to do anything without the legs. You can't progress mm. forward and you can't do anything. So you need every part of it functioning together to be able to complete the mission that Christ has given us to do. Yeah, and, and Jesus uses it a couple times in the Gospels in Matthew 16 and Matthew 18. And in Matthew 16, you, you see him talking about the universal aspect of the church, this global body of Christ. And then in Matthew 18, you see him talking about a local aspect of it. So it's both. And often people who know that the church is not a building and they know it's the people of God, they'll, they'll hear and talk in the universal aspect, but they skip over the local aspect. Mm. And that, that colony of the kingdom, so to speak, where there is leadership, where there is the service of one another and loving one another and the, the different gifts that God gives the body on mission as a family following Jesus. So that aspect has to be there for it to fulfill what Christ came to build. 
So yeah, so it's easy. It, there's no <clears throat> accountability if I'm just part of the universal church Correct. because like, hey, I'm part of the church. I'm part of the body. But but there's no often where's the communion? Mm -hmm. Like talk about breaking the bread together mm -hmm. as a body. Where is the the gifting? We talk about the fivefold ministry. Uh, there is working. Like where do the fivefold ministry work to edify and build up the church? So we are no longer infant, but we come to the maturity in Christ. You don't see that. You don't see all of this that's missing. We want to talk. I want you to add some aspect to what need to be there to be church. I just want to say what need to be there to be church. I have five things. Five for one C3, <laughs> building. Worship leader, program, and good economy. <laughs> that, that is what we don't need. This don't need to be there. And this is what we already believe. Yeah. Uh, many of you will see that video. You believe that. You don't need to have a 501c3 nonprofit status <laughs> to be a church. You don't need to have a church building to be a church. You don't need to have a worship leader, a new, uh, uh, mean, uh, kids pastor, and, and, and all of that to be a church. You don't need to have a lot of programs and a website to be a church. You don't need to have a big economy to be a church. Jesus did not have any of this. The early church did not have any of this. But the early church was still the church. The early church was not solo people who was running around. They still got saved into a body where there was a lot of things. What is church? What, what do you need? Well, I would say number one is that we need to look like Christ. Everyone that is there is on a mission to be conformed to the image of Christ and do what Christ did. So we can go to church say the, the kind of church that you named, the 501c3, the worship team and everything. And I've led those and I've been to many of those for many of my, my times in my life. And the people there often did not look like Christ at all. They were not walking in holiness. They were not free from sin. They were not able to drive out demons. They were not able to baptize someone, lead them to repentance. And it's like, we call this the church, but yet it has no functionality in walking and conducting itself like Christ does. So church in whatever form or fashion that it is, the number one thing is for it to be conformed into the image of Christ because he's the head of the church and the body must be like him in every way. And when we, we have church in a family, I think the word family is, is a great definition for church. When we have a family, we see what you're talking about is the accountability. When a family lives with one another, if there is, if one person is angry in a day and they all have to share the bathroom, everybody's going to know that person has an anger problem and they need to deal with it. And that's how church should be because it says that we're supposed to put off anger. So if we have anger and we're bringing that into a family, if we have anger and we're bringing that into a church, the church should be formed in such a way that it would not be able to put up with that anger, but to be able to have that member deal with it and remove it in a way. And you need that closeness of a family to be able to bring that image of Christ in it. So let's say like that. When, when you get baptized, you get baptized into Christ. Uh, Christ is Christ our head who is in heaven, but you get baptized into the body of Christ who is here on earth. You are newborn. In the natural, we are born into a natural family. In the spiritual, mm. we are baptized into mm. a spiritual family. In the natural, we have parents who raise us up, protect us, that need a lot of protection in the beginning. In the spiritual, the same is working. Um, so this is how it is, but it's enough then like we often say, Jesus said, when two and three are together, I'm in the midst of them. Is that a church when two and three meet? Is that enough? No, you can all be disciples, but I don't believe it's that local aspect of the church that Jesus is talking about in Matthew 18, which is actually where the passage comes from. And it actually is dealing with discipline, right? And there has to eventually, at some point, you have to be a blood-bought people. You have to be people who've been redeemed by Jesus and as Ephesians 2, 9 says, the household of God. And there you see at some point, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the beginning, but there has to be a, a place of leadership. Even the fivefold ministry, there's five, mm. right? 
and for the equipping of the saints, which saints multiple. So we're talking at least seven right there. Mm. And not that God defines it by a number, but there has to be aspects of leadership mm. uh, in that. And there has to be uh, multiple people for the gifts to benefit the whole body. And just in the, the listing of the giftings, if each person had one uh, in that instance, you would have well over a dozen people if all the gifts are present in, in one fellowship. Mm-hmm. So I don't think you can have the multiplication factor. I don't think you can have the health of a local body. I don't think you can have proper leadership or have, have uh, you know, the parents and the teenagers and the infants if you only have two or three people, mm. that it has to grow from that to really get to that place of health, maturity, and to uh, operate on the mission of God from a healthy mm. place as you go forward to multiply. If we think of the, the letters, all letters in the Bible, 21 letters, it was all written to to the churches. Mm. It was all it was written to often to the elders, they address the leadership, like if you take the revelation to, to the elders there, that there was church, Paul, he was dealing not just with individual people, he was dealing with them as a group. Mm-hmm. So there need to be a knowing who's part of that group and who's not part of that yeah. group. There is also a whole aspect, if you th- take First Corinthians 5, where I talk about church discipline, there is a church discipline that needs to be taking place there, where there was a people shoot because of their sin and they don't want to repent, they had to be thrown out, given all to mm-hmm. Satan, so they would be safe on the day of the Lord. So there will there is a church discipline, but there needs to be a who's part of it and who's not part of it. There needs to be a, a thing going on. And if people just like, hey, I meet with you when I want to meet, and I meet with you when I want to meet, I meet with no one, you, you don't have the same mm. belonging together. When I say that, I know it's so difficult for many people to understand because they think that, okay, so I need to be on a non for, uh, 501c3, I need to be in one of the churches, be need, but I want to say Jesus is building his church. There is a church he's being built. Maybe it don't have a name. It don't have to have a big name. It don't have to have a non-profit. It don't have to be part of a church organization or be under all of this. It, we have seen things that is Christ built. Mm-hmm. There is Jesus is the head. He's making it. And we see it all over America where fellowships are being developed and fellowships are growing. There, it may be start as a uh, a disciple group. Mm-hmm. It starts growing up with, like we have here, with 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 the Discovery Bible Group. It grow up. It maybe don't start the first day with the fivefold ministry in function. Often they don't do. Yeah. It maybe don't start first day with elders and all of it because Paul, when he did missionary work, it did not start with elders right away because this should not be new believers, so they get pride. So proud, but later. With those groups he started, he sent Timothy and other back to them to continue mm-hmm. the work, to appoint elders in every fellowship. So there is a growing up. So I would say don't limit the small beginning, but don't keep it there. It's okay to start in a beginning phase, but while things grow and mature, mm-hmm. there should be leadership. Mm-hmm. There should be five or ministry working together. That local community should be connected with more body, other local communities, so we get a fullness of Christ. So it only do not become this little, because we have also seen groups where they're so isolated, they're only together with themselves, and it becomes very weird. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what do you mm-hmm. want to say, add to this? I just want to say the importance of multiplication with church as well. Because when a church gets too large, the accountability drops, the functionality of it drops, and people are useless, so to say, in the church, as mean, meaning they're not, they're not useful as far as being active in that. It's, it's too easy for to be a large body and be inactive. But when you're a smaller body and you're holding everyone accountable, um, the activity is much larger. 
larger because there's more weight, there's more responsibility for each person to do. So it's also important to multiply the churches as well. As we're multiplying disciples, we need to multiply the fellowships and multiply the churches. And this goes into raising up leaders as well because when we're, we're making disciples and we're raising up leaders, we give those new leaders responsibility to be a leader over another church that we multiply and reproduce. So multiplication is also a necessity if we're going to grow the body of Christ. Now, now you, you have worked with church, you have worked with church, you have worked with church. I worked with church. How, how long time did it take for you to really taste what church is all about in a way? Because I know from my own experience, I got saved in a church. Um, uh, non, non, non-denomination church and I was there for a few years it was really really good then we left that church and we moved to another city we did a church plan and then after some time there we moved to another city and we did a church plan again but it was first there I actually after being in a church after starting a church and I came to a new place it was first there I actually this is church like, mm. whoa, I, I actually love those people around me. Mm. I can actually say I love them. Before, of course, I loved them because the Bible says we should <laughs> love our enemy. No, we should <laughs> love the people around us. But, but it was not like, it was not family. I, didn't have, I did not have the family feeling. I did not have the church, the church feeling. I know what church is now. And when I tasted what church was, it, I, it, it tasted good. It tasted mm. Amazing. I saw the fruit of it. Later, we left that city again and we attended another church where I actually ended up becoming a youth leader. And it was a more traditional church. But I could never fit in again. I could mm. never adjust to just that because I've tasted what real church is about. And I think for you who see the video, I think the biggest problem is that many people have not tasted what church is. Mm. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. not really known what church is. So when we talk about this, it's like it maybe don't make sense for you yet. But you who had tasted the church, you, you, you know what we are talking about and so on. What will you say about how long time do it take for you to really understand what church is? Well, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still trying to understand what, what real church is. I've come a long way and, uh, and learned a lot. But um, we can see in 1 Corinthians 14, 26 that it says when there, there's a gathering, there's an expectation for everybody to be a part of it, to everybody to share, for everyone to, you know, for some to... Um, share revelation, some to teach, some to give a, a tongues with interpretation. And when I've been in gatherings, like you're talking about, when I tasted church for the first time, when there, were, there was mature believers, mature disciples in one place, we did not need a program. We did not need a, a discovery group to, to be discipled further. We did not need um, something from sermoncentral.com for someone to teach us a sermon. The Holy Spirit was there and led the meeting. It was amazing. It was beautiful to taste that. But for a church to get to that place, we have to start with discipleship, like the Bible discovery groups, to disciple people into that place. And once I tasted that, though, I was like, this is what it's about. This is what what I want to strive for, the real church. Now I know the significance of it. So I was, and I would say like this, if I look at these papers here, we wrote three steps to get started. One step could be... Uh, go to the Kickstart package. It's easy. Next step could be do the Bible Discovery Group. But then I have a first step, start a Jesus Fellowship or start church or what, what, call it what you want. Because church is more than, than a Bible Discovery mm. Group, but it's part of it. Church yeah. is more than this, but it's part of it. It's part of all of it. But church has everything in it. Mm-hmm. Where this has some in it. Yeah. Another thing has something else in it, but when all of this work together, it really, we, we see what church is. Mm-hmm. What do we say about church? Yeah, I think I'm so excited about the church or uh, the, the fellowship of Jesus because Jesus came to build something. He said he came to build something and it wasn't a building. He came to build a people. He came to build a people who were blood bought, who were together that his Holy Spirit indwelt. Mm. And there's a, a way that that the Holy Spirit indwells the people or the community of God in a way he doesn't indwell the believer. That there's more of Jesus when we're together all in him in a, in a way that is not if we're by ourselves. And you're never, there's a ceiling on our individual mm. spirituality and following of Jesus 
that gets blown off when we're together and we're in, we're living life together in the family of God. And I call it the beauty chamber of Jesus, that that's actually what the church is. And that he's been thinking about her before the foundation of the earth. And he's been forming her mm. and that people, if, if we experience the true life that's available in the grace of God through the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, then people should be beating down our doors to get in. Mm. I truly believe that. And I tasted it early on and then I went away from it. And even, you know, stuff I did overseas, I didn't necessarily do in the States. And then even I got diluted into, into some things and coming out of that and in the last couple of years, man, I have such a deep hope for the church mm. and that it's actually God's strategy mm. for the earth. Mm. It's God's strategy for the Great mm. Commission. It's God's strategy to redeem the universe is actually the, mm. the church. And it's, it's beyond words mm. when you really think about it. It's beyond words. And we can experience the very life and fullness of God in the community of faith. And if, if we dangle that carrot before someone and they actually believe it, I think that the limits are, are there are no limits. Mm. And uh, the life of God in the church and the presence of the Holy Spirit and the empowerment and the, you know, the, the life of God and the love of Christ and these things. I mean, you look at his, uh, Jesus's prayer to the Father, his communion with the Father right before the cross in John 17, he actually says that the unity that is in the Godhead will be in the church. Mm. And when that happens, it's going to reveal God to the world. Mm. And so his strategy is us. Mm -hmm. Somehow mm -hmm. his strategy is us together. And I'm so hungry for that. Yeah. And I, I feel like I'm tasting it again afresh and even in new ways now. And I'm so excited mm. for it. And I, I just want everyone to catch that vision and understand who the church is, what the church is for, what we're capable of when we're submitted to Christ and loving one another and in community together. Um, and I think it's going to mean mm. a redemption of the earth and beckoning the, the bridegroom to come back for his bride. Mm -hmm. And I want to be a part of it. It's so exciting. I, I, I had a conflict with our pastor years ago in church where I, I, I left the church because I couldn't be part of it. It was so much for me, so much control, so much strategy, so much uh, 105C3 almost. It was so much human effort mm. and so little God. And I remember I had a discussion with him and, and, and I said, but, but let's just do what the Bible says. And he says, oh, yeah, but the Bible is all about church. I said, there's nothing about church in the Bible. He said, what? No, it's only church. I said, no, there's nothing church. We read the same Bible, but we read through different glasses. And I want to say, because in my time, when I said there's nothing about the church in the Bible, I was thinking church as the institution, mm. church as the building, church as the program, church as the organization, church as all of this. And I don't see that in the Bible. So we, we, sp we spoke really past each other because we saw a very, very different revelation of what church is. And, and I hated, I will almost say the words, I hated church. I love church now, <laughs> but, but my, my definition of what church has changed a lot. It's really changed a lot. I want to say to people out there, don't get angry at the church. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get angry at the institution. That's okay with me. Mm -hmm. You can get angry at some of the things, but don't throw the baby out with the bad water because mm -hmm. there is a church yes. and we need to be part of the church. And one of the key scriptures, example, when Jesus in, in Matthew 16, you know it, he, he's talked to Peter and I tell to you, you are Peter and on that rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. That is the key. Every time we hear that word, you are Peter, on that rock I will build my church. What are we thinking of the Catholic Church? Because they have adopted, they have catched that word. We are the Catholic Church. And I went to the Vatican in Rome some years ago and the logo is the two keys. The keys of Hades uh, and heaven, the keys Peter was given is the logo. And I went into the Vatican and it was just, whoa, what a deception. It's huge. But it was not the church Jesus was building. He was not thinking of a big, 
rock building, mm-hmm. all of that. But it don't mean that Jesus will not build his church. Mm-hmm. He will build it. And what I really see the last years is who's actually building the church? Jesus are. Mm-hmm. What is our job? To make the stones, to make mm-hmm. disciples. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. make disciples, and when we are focused on discipleship and equipping people and getting people into submission to Christ and, and living a good life, Christ is taking those living stones and yeah. he's putting them together and he's mm-hmm. building his church. And this is what you also have discovered, we have seen, mm-hmm. wherever we travel now in America and wherever we are, we see fellowship start. We mm-hmm. see living stones being put together, not under our headship of me, under the last reformation, under our non uh, nonprofit, under it. It's really Christ building his church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have that discipleship, if you don't have that clear gospel, if you don't have that dying to yourself, take up your cross, it will be a chaos. Mm-hmm. Then you need walls and everything else to hold it together but if you have that true life you don't need all that extra thing mm-hmm. and you can really have church mm-hmm. yeah say something Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. what, what will you say to people out there let's talk what? to two groups i want you to each talk to two group of people let's first start we can all one at a time let's start first to those who are out there and think they can be church alone what will you say to those people who think, I'm just church alone. I'm church wherever I am, and I'm not actually part of anything. You know, the comments say hi one time there, the comments mm-hmm. say hi one time there, but it's so easy to just fall away because there's yeah. no one who will miss them. Right, so I, 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 I have several friends that have tried to do that, be the church on their own, and it seems like they either end up making a bunch of videos saying all these pastors are false prophets and false people and everything because they have almost developed in their self what they believe is the truth and they, they have kept their self uh, away from. Mm. Or the other group that have tried to be the, the church to self that I had friends, they actually fell away from the faith. They left their first love. And I think it all comes back to accountability. When there's no one to hold you accountable, you can believe whatever you want to believe and think that that's the truth. And the enemy can take you as a lone sheep and separate you and then destroy you. So the necessity for us to be together is there's safety in that as well. I have never seen someone try to just go off on their own and be the church and it'd be really, really good. I, I remember I even felt a similar thing when I was an evangelist and I was traveling around, it was difficult for me to be a part of the church because I was always on the road. And how do I I go be a part of the church if I'm always just preaching and doing a revival here and there? And there was actually something impure that I felt developing in me. It was a pride. And it was because if I went and I did somewhere, it was like I was the leader and I was the one in charge and whatever I said went sort of thing. When I showed up because they invited me in, they wanted to hear what I had to say. And it was almost like I could say whatever I want and that's what was was swallowed by the people. And then when I left, I didn't have to deal with whatever I said. You know, the pastors of the church would have to. So I even felt this in and of myself when I was traveling as an evangelist that I was starting to get separated from the body and I even started to to kind of develop my own ideas and things and it, and it wasn't healthy and i'm just thankful the lord showed that to me so i didn't get too far yeah yeah i would i would agree with everything jeremy said and that there there are no lone zebras mm. that you know a a lion pride when they're when they're on the hunt uh when the zebra herd is together it's confusing with all the different shapes and the movement and the stripes, the, the lion pride gets confused. But what, what a, a, a hunting lion pride tries to do is to cause a stampede to cause single individual zebras to go off from the herd. And when they do that, then suddenly they know their target and that's the one they kill. And I would say it's the same way in the fellowship, in the church, in the people of God. I would, I would say similar statements that um, not all giftings are given to any one person. So in an individual, they're lacking and every person can be deceived. We can all be deceived. You see that in the scriptures, a warning against deception mm. to churches, to Christians. Jesus talks about it in the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24. You see it 
in Colossians 2, do not be taken captive, right? So we can be deceived, but in the wise counsel of the body of Christ with multiple people, it is a lot less likely for that to happen because there's checks and balances and uh, different people are coming with different angles and, hey man, you're, you're getting off course mm-hmm. with, with this aspect and, mm-hmm. and there's accountability in mm-hmm. that. And, um, and God, the glory of God can't be manifested in one person, not in the same way it can in the whole, because when it's done in the whole, then God gets the glory because it's just, hey, that's the body of Christ. But when it's given an individual, then it's, hey, there's the man of God, there's the woman of God. And they actually get the glory and it robs it from God. When it's a whole company of people, God gets the glory and the others are nameless and faceless. And that's what we want. Mm-hmm. If, I want to say to be out there, let's say like this. If you are not in a fellowship, you need fellowship. And then we say, yeah, but the fellowship are fine. What if they are non-profit? What is a big institution? What is better than nothing? Mm. Don't we agree? Yeah, it's agree. much better to be in a fellowship than be a place where there's nothing. Yes. Go and find a fellowship. Yeah, but it's all about tithing and money, 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 money. Okay, maybe it's fine. If it's really bad, find another <laughs> fellowship like that. But it's still better to be part of something than to be part of nothing. Mm-hmm. And there is no perfect church out there. There is yeah. no, even our first, there's not perfect. Nothing is perfect. So find something, I would say. Oh, you can also watch, we want, we are seeing many new fellowship stars all over. And if you are la- longing for this, reach out to us. Maybe we know a fellowship near you, you're mm-hmm. not aware of. And maybe you can find new fellowships if you have something where it's really not good. Find fellowship. Even if you have to drive one, two hours for it, it's better to drive and be part of something than to be part of nothing. And then when you're part of something, commit yourself to it. Say, I'm here. Because otherwise you come in one Sunday and then you come next month and you come two months later and, and it's still being alone. And then what happened when you are under attack, when says and put in, no one is going to call you. No one is going to come and knock your door. No one will say, here, here I am. And we are all have times. I have times where it's just hard. So I want to say, find a fellowship, even if it's not perfect, find something. Then I want to end up to talk to those people who are in the church as we were in. Mm-hmm. How will you say to them, to encourage them to say there's more out there? I can start. There's so much more. Guys, I want to say to your pastors and leaders <laughs> out there, and you who are tired of just going to a Sunday meeting, <laughs> same again, 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 there is more. It is like living in the book of Acts. You said that the other day, we see like, like we see growth. Yesterday, we have a meeting here. I was not here. Somebody else was speaking. They are growing up. They are taking responsibility. We have like 50, 70 people out on the street every day. We have here testimonies, beautiful testimony. We have a guy here. He was a homeless guy just a few weeks ago. One of the people was led to him in a mall and he got born again. And now we invited him in and he lived with us. And he's, he's growing up and, and it's so beautiful. I could not do that alone. I would not invite, uh, could invite him in alone. I would not be able to take care of it. But we really see growth. And then when we travel around, we see how Jesus is building his body. We have family all over America. And, and he came here and he go to Georgia. You go other place and you are all over. You're just in New York. And every place we are, we meet the family, the body of Christ. And it's not an institution. It's not a TLR under this and all. It's, it's really Christ building us together and the unity is in him, the unity in, in the gospel and in discipleship and understanding what church is. Get it. That was what I wanted to say. What is this? <laughs> yeah, the fruit. The fruit is what it, it's... When the disciples came back in Luke chapter 10 and they were so excited because they were casting out demons and they were telling Jesus they were so excited, like, I know why they were so excited. It is very exciting to feel the fruit. It's very exciting to feel that when you're casting out demons, it gives you a lot of excitement because you know you're fulfilling what Christ gave you to do. The uh, previous three months, I traveled and um, I was on the road for three months and I went to several different places. 
In those three months, um, I saw 35 people baptized, came to faith, full repentance. We made sure they were, had fully repented of their sins and baptized them. And I saw about 40 people filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues for the first time. That is incredible fruit compared to what I've ever seen in my life. In three months, just that, that many, 35 people baptized, 40 people filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. And the best part about it is that myself, I only baptized maybe three or four of those people. And it was just the small disciples that were around me that were doing the disciples, that were doing the baptisms, getting people filled with the Holy Spirit, also casting out demons and healing the sick. This is the life that we're called to do. And I'm not just living it myself now, but I'm also at a place now where I'm able to teach others how to do it. And it is such a joy. It's like when a father, a father would much rather his son catch a fish or his son shoot a deer or his son accomplish something. And he takes so much more joy and pleasure than that. I, I understand that feeling as well when I'm seeing my disciples go out and live this life and see the fruit that I'm seeing as well. Now I'm not calling you my son, but I still invested in you. We <laughs> yes, still yes, spend time I, together. And I want to say I saw you do the kickstart in New York and I was I was actually seeing the whole sermon I was out running at the same time Jesus was doing it live and I was rejoicing my heart I was like yeah and I was like I'm ready to step back now he's much better than I am like he's doing a really good job and I felt like okay I'm, I'm ready to step back I, I think I find another thing to do and, and and this is really what it should be like we are raising up people we are investing to people even if they're only here for a short time and they run with it and and, and this when it's church like this the true fruit we will first see that day we are home with our lord jesus christ mm -hmm. because you invest in people who invest in people who invest in and and those three months with those desires you had it's so good fruit but the mindset many other churches i've been in the mindset is no i'm the past i baptize yeah. but your mindset is is uh, we are here as a body to raise people up and train other people beautiful and I'm always saying to people out there. Yeah, there is, there is so much more. And Jesus didn't come in the incarnation. He didn't spill his holy blood on a cross. He didn't defeat death and ascend uh, to the right hand of God so that we could be bored in a building. That's, that's not what he came for. He came to give life and life abundantly. And that life is in him and that life is in his body. And when we actually experience the, the body of Christ, we meet all of the longings of the human heart. That we were created, you were created for God, and you will not find God unless it's through the door of Jesus. And you won't experience the love you were made for, the fascination that you're longing for, except in the body of Christ. And I think we can all say, not that we experience it every day, but we experience it. We experience this life on a regular basis. And once you experience it and you've tasted that, you cannot go back. So if you're bored, if you're dull, if you're reading the scriptures and you're saying, this book is so much different than my life, this book is so much different than the community's life that I see around me, it's because there is an invitation to you for yes. the more. And there is more available to us And if we uh, are connected to Christ together in unity and we're doing it the way Jesus taught us to do it and modeled it for us to do, we will experience these things. We will experience the more and it's addictive. It is. <laughs> and, and, there's, and what is beautiful in this also is that there's no competition. Right. Like I rejoice when you are fruitful. I rejoice when you are. I, I rejoice by, because we're not fighting for one platform. Mm. It's not like in, mm. in a church, like everything is about the platform. Oh no, he's a better preacher than me. Then I'm not allowed to preach. I have to wait two <laughs> months to. You know, the harvest is great. And you will yeah. see that when you're out there, yeah. the harvest is great. It's ready, it's ripe, but the workers are few. And if, so I always want to say, step out and, and experience this harvest and be part of the harvest and work together with us in the harvest because there's work enough for all of us and it's so beautiful see more the videos in the description we put some link in also to our movies the last one was in life in the beginning see it see the other videos here and reach out to us let let us know how we can help you to set up jesus fellowships where you are god bless you bye bye